the best thing about learning to program is the ability that it gives you to solve problems. And I always say in this channel that programming is not about just the programming for the sake of it. it is the gateway to solving problems. It allows us to solve problems through software that we build by using programming languages. And in the past two, three years or so, AI has been everywhere. Everywhere you go on the internet, everything is about AI. And, but I know some of us are scared of it. Others are reluctant to even acknowledge of its existence. But the reality is AI is here to stay and we just have to figure out how to live with it. And I think it's good news that we have AI because for us as developers or us as people who are learning to program, we want to leverage AI to make our lives and the lives of other people better. So that is the essence of all of this. Now, when it comes to AI, there are a lot of things that we need to think about if you want to really dissect and understand what AI is. So at the very center of artificial intelligence, AI, there is what we call large language models, LLM. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you what this thing called large language model is and how it works. And without any further ado, let's get to it. All right, so before we do anything, we actually need to understand what an LLM is. In this case, what is a large language and what uh, does it do? So what is a large language model? Well, a large language model essentially is just an algorithm, not just because it is very uh, loaded in a sense, but an overview of what is, it's just think of it as an algorithm that was trained on a large amount of data, text data. So the goal of a large language model is to generate human-like text. So the idea is that it understands us humans, but not really, right? Because there's more to that. But in general, that is the concept, right? So this text that it generates, it's human-like text based uh, on the input it receives. So the idea is that we give it an input and then we receive uh, a an output, in this case, a response in a natural language. So the main keywords here for what a language model is essentially is that it is extensively trained in a natural language, okay? because the idea is that to respond to us in a natural language, such as English, German, Spanish, and so forth. Now, the model, again, as I said, it has to be trained on a lot of different data, right? So, so this process of training it it has to be preceded by data collection. So there's data collection that happens, textual data, and sometimes audio images and so forth. And that is used to train that language model so that it has the core knowledge. So now this collection of knowledge or collection of data in this case, right? And training the model, uh, what happens is that the model will then learn patterns in human language through articles, studies, news, and so forth. Now, this training process has a few steps involved. Okay, the first step is what we call the unsupervised learning. So at this stage here, what happens is that the model starts to learn the relationships between words and concepts. And then what comes after that is what we call the fine tuning of the model. The fine tuning happens once we have what we call a supervised learning. So after the first stage, then we go to the next training stage. So the training data goes through a transformer. So what is a transformer? Well, a transformer is another tech that is based on what we call a neural network. Here is where the process of analyzing the input text in a way that can understand context, semantics, and even some nuances of human, human language. So this is the further step of training the model so that it's kind of, I would say with lots of grain of salt, kind of like a human uh, neural network that we have in our brain. So we understand things uh, with context, right? Semantics, and even more the relationship between words and text that we are able to analyze as people, our brain is able to analyze. So that is the idea that's happening with this process using transformers. Okay, so we are recognizing the relationships and connections using a self-attention mechanism, which we'll look in a second here. All right, so that's an overview. So the transformer architecture is very complex, but I'm going to show you a little bit 
of it right now. So, so again, the transformer architecture is the neural network. Just think of a neural network as your brains. You have your brain inside of your brains. You have what are called neurons. Those neurons have these connections that form this web of information going through right communicating around and the training happens there so that is what a transformer architecture is based on this is a very complex topic of course but i'm going to break it down attempt to break it down so we have some sort of a general idea uh, how this works so in this example here a transformer is being shown as just a black box right so where we have in this case encoders and decoders now let's say we want to translate a text. So we want to translate this text in Portuguese into English. So what happened is that the encoders would be fed the input, receive that input, and then chop it up and analyze it. And then the decoder, of course, will do all the work it needs to do and then spit out, I eat an apple as the translation for eu como uma maçã. Okay, of course, this is a way simplified version of what really happens because transformers are really complex but that is indeed the idea now because i know most of you are technical so the same thing here what happens is that if we go even deeper we still have encoder and decoder and the process of translating that text into english still happens but what would happen inside of the encoder has this thing called the self-attention. So what is the self-attention layer? So this is where uh, the decoding of the word, the input word, in this case, the Portuguese word, happens. So the self-attention layer, its job is to actually decode and look at the relationship between those words that to help lead to, in this case, a better encoding for that word. Right, so you can see that encoder here has this self attention mechanism, and the decoder has also a self attention mechanism, right? But also it has this encoder decoder attention, which is another layer. We don't have to go into that, but that's the idea here. So, self attention is very important because that is what helps the decoder focus on relevant parts of the input sentence and look at the overall relationship and semantic of that sentence which then is going to be able to parse and understand what it, that means in a different language, in this case, in English. So the key words that I want you to capture here is that when you look at the transformer architecture and overview, um, the idea here is that what it does is that it captures relationships between words and understands the context, just like you and I can understand the context when we are talking to somebody or reading or listen to something. Does it make sense? So here's other keywords. So get and process input. That's what a transformer does, right? Understands, finds meaning, looks at semantics. So self-attention mechanism is there and context. So those are main keywords that I want you to look at. And of course, there is the input and output as we have seen earlier and training as well. There are many LLMs or large language model available. And usually people just call them models, language models instead of large, right? Because it's assumed that they're large, but sometimes there can be a smaller too, but they're still large. Okay, so if you hear language models, it's essentially the same thing. So we have a few, we have GPT 3.5, 4, and maybe by the time you're watching this video, there's GPT 110. <laughs> uh, we have Llama, we have Bloom, we have Flan UL2, we have ChatGPT, of course, as its own model. What are some of the use cases for these large language models? They can do a lot of things. For instance, they can generate text, as we know, translate languages, just like we saw in the example. Uh, they can do sentiment analysis, so you can feed it a text and you can ask it, what is the sentiment of this text is this is it humorous what is the tone is it sad and so forth okay and it can organize content they can summarize and rewrite content they can do all all sort of things okay like converse naturally with the user so we can actually uh, chat with our own documents that we can feed into these large language models or uh, just use what the large language model knows already Okay, and chat with it, creating chatbots and so forth. So this is an overview of what a large language model is and 
how it's trained and what happens in the back end or in this case how do large language models actually get quote unquote knowledge that we uh, use to create applications and interact with it all right so i hope you enjoyed learning about large language model which is essentially what drives ai artificial intelligence and the reason why that is important for you to understand this is because well number one ai is here to stay number two you are programmers or want to become programmers and so you need to understand at least the basics of ai which is large language models and how transformers work and so forth now there's a lot of course that comes with ai understanding everything about ai but i hope that this helped you at least now you have some sort of an overview on how ai works and what large language models are if you want to learn more how you as a developer how to leverage ai by using open ai api by using different large language models let me know if you like this kind of content in comments below that way i can make more content such as this so you are happy which also makes me happy all right and if you want to learn more about large language models and how to use all that stuff check the links in the description um, for a deeper dive on all of this thank you so much and i'll see you next